Greetings everybody, this is Sabin Dimitrov coming to you with another fun little video. Uh, well, this is Sabin Dimitrov aka A Dance for the Astral Wolf coming to you with another fun video. And you see these green messages? I apparently logged onto the game and found out I did four really good defense reports. And this first one is really, really cool. As you can see, I have almost all my, uh, my stuff on level 60, and I was able to, to defend us from multiple DGS attacks. Like I said, DGS is our sworn enemy. And it just feels so nice being able to get a sword hit on the enemy. That shockwave with the power of Scorpio killed everything on, on, on from this guy. So that is... This is going to, going to be three wins against this one person. Now this is the Hancock that is, you know, uh, RWE opening or SWE opened. So as you guys can see, the initial hit is absorbed. But what happens is that the uh, Terra Space comes through and does damage to the health points of the soldiers directly. And that is why the Origins are the superior airship. So if you're running against someone with uh, with SWE or Strength and Weaken Effect, use Origins. Their, their Terra Space will cut through the enemy. And then check out this one. Um, unfortunately, I lost against this person, but they did not leave unscathed. So I used a thing called Destructive Power, Crushing Blow, and Shockwave. So as you guys can see, I did a decent chunk of damage and then a little bit more damage. Unfortunately, this person has wicked uh, defense, but as you guys can see, he didn't hurt me at all. So even though I quote lost, I was still able to hurt him in the meantime. So that makes me extremely happy and very happy that I didn't, you know, get rid of uh, Dragon Slayer. And that makes me uh, happy that I was able to help defend our fort and our people from... Uh, those attacks and check it out look at this I just got a uh, a uh, what do you call it um, a quest done and that's really really cool and uh, like I said here are the battle reports so the one that I lost I killed 30, uh, 31,350 hummingbirds and 5,319 seagulls. Remember, when you start killing stuff in the uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, that's when stuff starts, starts getting uh, really expensive. And as you guys can see, they are running a very heavily uh, health point. Uh, is that a weapon? Ooh, I might want that as my new weapon. That's beautiful. That's a really nice weapon. The Aldebaran. Hmm. I like that it has health points. That might actually be able to make my uh, my Orochi much stronger. But as you guys can see, he is running stuff with lots of uh, damage reduction and health points. And you guys can see how that does protect him from uh, like the full... Fury of the Dragon Slayer. But as you guys can see, he still has to heal a considerable amount of soldiers. So he did not leave this with uh, any level of, uh, you know, uh, of uh, being unscathed. So I'm going to show you guys a little, a little replay. No, not replay, but I'm going to take a quick little few screenshots of these and put these in the chat that I got from uh, my. Uh, uh, for, for, for my guildmates, so they can see that. And I'm just so, so happy. There we go. That I was able to help protect us. Ooh. Sorry about that, guys. I accidentally shut off the screen, but I am back. And boom. There we go. So as you guys can see, uh, on this first attack from him, he lost... Da -da -da. Oh, uh, 1.73 million rangers and that uh, is going to fill up his medical bay considerably and he lost 86,916 lurkers I believe that is uh, tier 2 infantry 
And then on this secondary attack, this person lost 20 Eye of Greed. But technically, they would only be having to heal 10 because of the Abyssal Energy. But that means uh, they're going to have to heal and use their resources that they were trying to do against my people. And then on this one, uh, the uh, this person lost 1 point... Uh, technically, quote, 1.4 million uh, Rangers and... Uh, 173,832 lurkers. That is insane. And as you guys can see, I got a massive amount of amount of abyssal energy. That's really freaking good. And if that if I remember correctly, oop, nope, not that one. Abyssal energy is uh here. And, uh, when you, uh, yeah, so, it was, like, what was, like, down here, this, like, little area, these little, you see the little white dots on the screen that are popping up? It's, like, little right down here, and it went way up to here. So I got a massive amount of, uh, abyssal energy, and I can use that to heal my soldiers. And that makes me extremely happy that, uh, not only were we able to get abyssal energy, but we were able to help protect our guild. And that is another reason why... I, uh, why I ha why I haven't, uh, absorbed Dragon Slayer, because Dragon Slayer is really effective, even at being only 50k, and, uh, like it is, uh, seeing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the information from this, uh, replay makes me starting to think that I, I really should switch from Rogers over to Orochi. It makes me sad though because I have put so much work into Rogers and so much effort and resources and time and effort into Rogers. So I'm just, you know, I might just keep him the way he is and just start shoving everything over into Orochi. But uh, unfortunately, I might have to either put, uh, uh, what's that uh, term? Uh, absolute defense on Orochi or I might just do another queuing ability but yeah that's kind of frustrating but um you know sometimes you have to do that what I think I might actually do is just put a uh, well it's just uh I don't know I'm gonna have to talk with my people some more and just see what would be a good way a good way to do stuff because the uh having a healing ability on a heavy defense commander makes him even more annoying to deal with the problem is that uh, Rogers benefits greatly from uh, a absolute defense. So if I strip that from him and I, uh, I go for something else and do natural force, it's still a good healing ability, but unfortunately it's only going to, going to be level 30. And that means he, Rogers is going to lose 6,000 uh, final defense. And that is, uh, and also remember, it's a passive ability. But, uh, that also might be good in, in, in a sense because, uh, he can heal. And Rogers originally usually cannot heal. So, that might be a good, good thing to do. So, like it is, guys, uh, feel free to give me your input and tell me what you guys think I should do. Should I swap over to Orochi as my main defense commander or as, like, my uh, tied secondary commander and then put a uh, uh, natural force on Rogers? Or, you know, just what do you guys think I should do? Because level 30 Menderbot on Rogers would actually also be really really cool as well but uh I don't know it's just like I said feel free to free to give me your guys's input as well but yeah you know like I said I'm very very proud of Dragon Slayer she did an amazing job she was able to fight against a Hancock commander who is the scourge of our guild that person keeps messing up our uh our people with uh, their defensive commanders because uh, they are so uh, strength and weakened effect uh, boosted.
But when you have the origins as well as the penetration and, you know, what Dragon Slayer is running, you know, that makes it so that way she's able to actually uh, fight against that. Because she has RWE on some of her stuff. Oh, whoa, gee whitakers. And, uh, yeah, so I'm very, very proud of uh, how um, how well she did. And uh, she's going to going to continue to be in my... Uh, in my... Uh, in my top five commanders for the foreseeable future until they add something that's even better which i highly doubt but yeah like, like i said guys you know i eventually had to get rid of golem and switch over to vega so maybe i might have to make another hard choice and switch from rogers to orochi but you know like it is guys it's just you know just a thought but yeah but yeah so you know i just wanted to show you guys the, these awesome uh, uh replays because it makes me so happy that I was able to uh, really uh, make a, a DGS think twice. And as you guys can see, he's trying multiple different commanders against me. He's trying, trying to run a Hancock. You know, th th this is the really strong fellow that we were talking about. This is a, uh, a destruction and a strength and weaken effect. Strength and weaken effect. Strength and weaken effect. Critical weather and strength and weaken effect. Has 135, 141, so 5, 10, that's 300, 400. That's like 730% awaken, 730% uh, uh, resistance weaken effect, no, uh, strength and weaken effect. And that means the Ether de Jin and other ships can't get through that unless you are running RWE, which is resistance weaken effect. And I have... Where is it? A tiny bit of that. 150%. So that helped me. But that's 730 plus percent awakening for, no, um, uh, percentage for the SWE. That is rough. That is horrifying. So it makes me very, very happy that we were actually able to give this guy a nasty, uh, a nasty time. Now, uh, and yeah, so really the only reason why this person won against me is because they have an absolute crap ton of critical weather and defense and health points. Also, their equipment is better than mine. But considering that we were actually able to still do this much damage to them with a small dragon slayer that's really freaking good so i'm very very happy that we were actually able to really land the hurt oh that's kind of cool so apparently they added an option in the game that says suggestion well that's weird no, so so um, I, um, I, what happens is that when you lose certain battles, uh, it'll give you an option that says defeated. You can increase your power by upgrading commander leadership, and you can click on any one of these four arrows. You can upgrade commander skill, you can give commander better equipment, or you can train more soldiers. And let's say you click on the first one, the green one. It'll automatically take you to your commanders, and you can automatically uh, undo that. So that's a really, really cool uh, uh, thing that they actually added into the game. And because originally they would only show up, at the, show up after certain battles, but now at the bottom of each battle, uh, um, of each battle that you lose, uh, it'll give you suggestions and kind of re remind you what you need to do. But yeah, so you, you know, um, I have more than enough soldiers for her, and I want to keep her small, and that's kind of the point. But I like it that the developers added this into the game, so that way if you're like, if you're new in the game, you, it, they kind of give you little reminders of what you should do. Now, like I said, the reason why I'm making these videos is first, it's fun being able to uh, make content for you guys to enjoy. But second of all, I want to be able to help you guys... Uh, do better in the game and not just go into this without any uh, foresight and that is one of the reasons why I am making this I'm making all these videos for you about Ark of War so that way all of you guys can be able to uh, see uh, you know start the game off actually knowing kind of what to do so yeah
Um, I hope that this video has been informative for you guys. I hope that it's kind of shown you guys how a properly uh, built Dragon Slayer, even though small, can still be devastating to the enemy. And, uh, yeah. Haha. Uh -huh. Thanks, bro. It felt awesome killing DGS. But yeah, uh, DGS is our sworn enemy. They are very hot-headed, kind of rude, and uh, it's like Goliath boasting to the Israelites, saying, Hey, where's your god now? Blah, 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 being all kind of full of themselves and all that crap. So we're going to be like David and uh, give a good old-fashioned butt whooping. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, technically, since Dragon Slayer is tiny, she is, is like the rock that smacked Goliath in the head and knocked him down. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's quite the reference. But yeah, so it's uh, it's kind of funny. But yeah, it makes me happy being able to, you know, help our guild because I haven't exactly made the smartest choices in the past about running uh, different commanders and different marches. And like I told you guys in my previous videos, I suffered greatly for that. And it took me a long, it took me a little while to get my soldiers healed up and a lot of resources and help. But uh, you know, like I said, with the help, with the wonderful help of my guild, and with uh, with uh, um, with the insight on how to heal soldiers, I can now be much more effective in the uh, in the game and actually help my guild even better and be able to run things on a more uh, safe route without having to risk big marches. And that's one one of the things that Orochi is going to be able to do is that. Uh, with even with only tier two soldiers, he can take on large, uh, high tier marches, especially if he has absolute defense. And uh, like it is with this uh, one right here I t that my friend Architect told me about, uh, Architect and Bad Wolf, uh, you know, th uh, having these two pieces of equipment is already 50% uh, damage reduction. So having that absolute defense on Orochi will make him like a, like abysmal to deal with. Just like a real bad time to deal with. And I have enough uh, stuff for uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, uh, where is it? Here we are. Absolute defense. But the, the, the thing that scares me is that how much of these absolute defense brain plugins am I going to lose? Because anything over level 10, you lose a certain amount of uh, plugins, and I don't want to have to be stuck at level 25 having to slowly work my way back up to level 30. So uh, I'm hoping that I won't lose too much, but that does kind of make me a little concerned because what if I lose a considerable amount of uh, absolute defense uh, plugins? Because if I hit this, it says you will lose a certain number of skill plugins when, re when removing skills above ten percent. So that really concerns me, and I don't want to do that and then suddenly handicap myself and really, really screw myself over. Now, like it is, I might uh, just add Menderbot on onto uh, Rogers and just make him effective in that way, and then put a Rochi with absolute defense. So that way, Rogers is harder to kill, and that way, a Rochi is uh, more annoying to actually hit because he's going to be soaking up a F ton of damage. So, like it is, guys, I'm not exactly really sure what I want to do. But, you know, it's, this is kind of some of the stuff that I'm thinking about, and this is kind of valuable input for you guys to think about as well and try to run synergies in the, the game. And like I said, as long as you configure your skills correctly, you can be really effective, and even early on as well. Now, mind you, a lot of the equipment that, the equipment that you can craft, you have to be level 22 or level 21. So you want to be careful with that because... Uh, uh, to get like really good equipment, like all of this stuff at the end, like from the the ruthless all the way to the, uh, uh, I think all the way to the titan and the armorer of the tyrant, you have to be uh, level twenty two. 
if I remember right. It's remember it's been like a year or so since I've seen all this, but yeah. So you're gonna have to to settle with event gear like uh, this, or sometimes this, sometimes this, and sometimes this. But uh, the the easiest way often is to uh, get that. But yeah, I, I really do hope that this has been valuable insight for you guys, and I hope that you know. Uh, that you know these videos continue to help you guys be better in the game and kind of give you guys stuff to think about you know But yeah, I have to end the video here. I realize I'm starting to ramble on again But anyway, uh, this has been Sabin Dimitrov aka a dance for the Astro Wolf It's been a pleasure to have you guys here to celebrate with me uh, my successful defenses and uh, Hopefully I can see you guys on the next video very very soon. You guys stay awesome and always remember God bless